Greetings and salutations. I am Neil Isaacs, the Raleigh business broker, and I'm coming to you with more content for business owners, for business buyers about the sale of a small business. Now, I represent businesses in the Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina market. This information is for any buyers or business owners, but really I want to talk more to business owners than business buyers in this video. Business buyers, business owners, put in the comments if you agree or disagree, but I want to give a earnest and passion plea based on what I hear every single day from talking to buyers and sellers. So the topic today is really how do business owners and business buyers value businesses differently and possibly who's right. So with that, let me dive in. We'll start with a business owner. How does a business owner value his or her business? Well, here's the calculation I hear a lot. Here's what I put into the business. I worked really hard for a long time. I need to put my daughter through college or I need to, to pay some bills. That seems like a fair price to me, the business owner. The beauty of entrepreneurship is that you, the business owner, can ask for anything that you want for your business. You own it. You can put a price on it. Where I come in as a business intermediary is I look at what business buyers are paying for businesses. And then I will advise an owner how what, what I feel the likelihood of them selling that business at that price is. And more likely than not, more on average, I tell more business owners I, I can't meet their price then tell business owners that they could get more. So let's let's shift now to how business buyers value businesses. The chief question that they have is, how else could I spend this money and make similar money? What are my options? If this business makes 100,000 or 1 million, what other businesses are available to make the same or similar money and how does that fit with what I'm looking for, right? So this is the this is the big challenge, is these two different mindsets. Business owner, this is what I want. Business buyer, these are my alternatives. So there's a dynamic here. The facts are, my professional experience as a business intermediary, that it's the money and specifically the cash flow that drives 90 plus percent of the value of a company. 90 plus percent, the value of the company is driven off of cash flow. And I want I want that to set in for a minute because in business brokerage, we talk to a lot of business owners and very quickly we start to hear, I call it the, the shoulda, woulda, couldas. A new buyer could do A, B, and C. If I had this to do over again, I should have done C, D, and E. Or, you know, if I were to do this, I would have done that. That's totally fine. Again, it's your business. You run it the way that you see fit. But buyers are very, very quick. I, I'm a business broker. I bring businesses to market. I am stabbed in the back by the, the arrows of objection from buyers. They're very, very quick when the should have, would have, could have come up to point out that, that the current owner really is in the best position to capitalize on those opportunities because really it's they know their business the best. And business buyers will say, you know, why should I have to pay for, for the, the work and the, the, the work that I'm going to do to make the money in the future? So, you know, the most, somebody told me this is the most business brokerage expression ever, but it is so, so true. And it is that, Business buyers buy for the future, but they pay for the past. They buy for the future, they pay for the past. So, you know, buyers don't want to hear about how, how good business used to be. This is not productive if you're a seller to talk about the good old days when you used to make money. Um, buyers or owners typically do go there a lot. That it does speak to potential, but we, we, we've addressed that. You don't want to be talking about the peak of your business being in the past. 
right? Business buyers are looking for opportunity in the future. And quite frankly, the banks are very, very particular about this too. In fact, we're talking about value, finance ability is a major, major driver of value. So I started this video talking about buyers and sellers, but now let's talk about banks. If there's not a bank that will finance a deal, the risk is equally shared by the buyer and seller in, in regards to the buyer pays full price and they don't have their money anymore or the seller seller finances and now they don't have all of their money. That's a bridge for the for the risk. But if a bank will finance a business, now we have a third party that says, I'll manage the risk of this, this not getting paid and seller, you can have all the cash at closing or the majority of the cash. So now let's talk about banks and value. Banks and savvy buyers, specifically SBA banking, they look at the, the documented cash flow for the last three years. And they pay very close attention to whether that cash flow is trending up or trending down, if it's sustainable, if there's customer concentration. They, they, they know how businesses work. They will ask all of these questions. So... If it's financeable, that's a great sign that the value is there, that that the owner doesn't necessarily have to consider seller financing options, although they could, although there may be advantages there. But banks come into come into this value equation pretty quickly for that reason. So in, in wrapping this up, I, I hope this discussion is useful. I hear it from both sides all the time. As I mentioned, it's it's my role as an intermediary to guide owners and their options for exit. We tell it like it is. We don't tell owners what they want to hear. We'll tell them this may not be what you want to hear, but we feel that this is the truth. This is how buyers will look at your business. This is the finance capacity of your business. Owners do not fall into the trap of thinking that a business buyer will fix the problems that you know that your business has. You're in the best position to capitalize, to make the money. If the, if, if the opportunity is there, execute on it. Drive your numbers as high as possible and go out on top. Don't sell after your best year ever. Think about selling your business when you just had your best year. Because the, the year after your best year, you started to de decline. Your options for exit diminish significantly. If you want to talk about what makes a business valuable more, Reach out to me, Neil Isaacs, the Raleigh business broker. If you have some specific issues, everything we do is confidential, so you might want to direct message me. But you're welcome to post anything uh, on this the, in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share. You know the drill. Thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Neil Isaacs saying mahalo.